Welcome back everyone to another Fat Ninja Studios review of Loki. Today we're looking at episode 3, Lamentis. Before we get started, just want to say that if you enjoy our content, please like the video and make sure you hit that subscribe button and then share the video with as many friends as possible. If you're an avid viewer, don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay up to date every time we release a new video. Spoiler warning ahead. So make sure to watch the episode first. So a quick recap, last episode, Loki met Sylvie just before she set off several reset charges and deployed them all over the timeline, then disappeared through a portal and Loki followed her. This episode kicks off with Sylvie meeting at a bar with C20, having a drink and discussing brain freezes. Using mind manipulation by altering one of C20's memories, Sylvie begins to dig for information regarding the location of the timekeepers. Title credits roll, and then it cuts to Sylvie being inside the TVA, ready to charge and defeat those timekeepers. Several agents have been deployed to the various branches in the timeline, so the TVA is mostly empty. Curious enough though, she tries using her enchanting power on one of the guards, and it doesn't work. This means, unlike Loki, she's never actually been in the TVA, at least not long enough to hear all the rules or she'd know that her magic doesn't work there. This results in her having to go hand to hand, in which she proves herself to be easily capable of taking down more than a few agents. Moments later, Loki enters the TVA and decides to arm himself, going into B-15's locker to take the daggers back that she stashed there. From here, Loki catches up with Sylvie in a gold hallway, presumably in front of the elevator that will lead her up to the Timekeeper's hideout. After a brief exchange of words and fisticuffs, Renslayer appears in the hallway and is flanked by two agents, ready to take them down. Sylvie takes Loki hostage, threatens to kill him, to which Renslayer replies, Come any closer and I'll kill him. Go for it. This prompts Loki to steal the tempad from Sylvie and quickly portal them out to another timeline. When they arrive, Sylvie scrambles for the tempad, eager to portal herself away and leave Loki behind. But to her disappointment, the tech needs to be recharged. Loki uses his magic abilities to disarm Sylvie and take the tempad from her, and just before he is able to take her down for good, they're interrupted by a crashing meteorite. Stepping outside, it's revealed that they have ended up on Lamentus 1, in the year 2077, just before the moon crashes into the nearby planet. Lamentus in Marvel Comics is an outworld at the edge of Kree space. It is most notably featured during the Annihilation prologue, where Quasar is introduced. In this prologue, Quasar and her companion Moondragon, who is Drax's daughter in the comics, are protecting a group of monks called the Priests of Pama from raiders and the like. Quasar is contacted by a mysterious voice to find the Kree Savior to stop a universe-ending event, and not long after the moon is hit by a massive shockwave. All this eventually leads into the Annihilation Conquest storyline, where a race of insect-like aliens try to wipe out all living things. However, for the time being, Loki and Sylvie are stranded here, needing to find a power source to recharge the Tempad. Sylvie is momentarily forced to protect Loki as he tried to use his magic to hide the Tempad, her only way out of here. They spend most of their time bickering while dodging incoming projectiles as the planet rains down debris on the moon. They duck into a shelter and Sylvie tries to enchant Loki, but it doesn't work. This prompts Sylvie to reveal her frustrations to him about messing up her plan, and then they decide to head to a nearby town to find a power source. Along the way, Loki keeps referring to her as a variant, which she exclaims that she's not a Loki, not anymore. The town is almost fully abandoned, whether by force or self-preservation. However, just on the outskirts, there's a little house with power still on. 
Sylvie takes the more frontal approach by kicking in the door and instantly being blasted backwards by a Kree rifle, sending her careening into the dirt. Loki suggests a more diplomatic approach and attempts to talk to the woman by pretending to be her dead husband. The woman sees right through it though and blasts him into the dirt as well. Loki dusts himself off and explains to her that they mean no harm, they just need to know where everybody went. The woman explains that they're most likely at the Ark, a giant spaceship evacuation vessel, and to get there they need to board the train. However, she doesn't think they're going to be able to get on board because they'll need a ticket, which is hard to come by. When they arrive at the train station, Sylvie suggests her usual forward violent approach, but Loki again, in all his ego, thinks his plan is much better. He uses an illusion trick to disguise himself as one of the Kree sentries and escorts her onto the boarding platform. This works about halfway until he's informed that he still needs a ticket to board the train. With quick thinking, Sylvie brushes the guard's arm and convinces him to let them on. Inside the train, there's beautiful decorations all about, and it's filled with wealthy looking passengers, especially compared to those that are begging to still be let on the platform outside. Loki and Sylvie take a seat in a booth, continuing to bicker about how different they are from one another. They talk about their respective roles in their universes, mostly their mothers and upbringing, and their upbringing in magic. While Loki was taught by Frigga to perform illusions such as conjuring small fireworks in the palm of his hands, Sylvie taught herself how to enchant people. They also reveal how each of them feel lonely, never having found a real connection with anyone, and that the word love is hard to define for them. After a time skip transition, Sylvie wakes up from having passed out for a little while and finds Loki entertaining the other passengers with song and dance. A nice little callback to Thor occurs when Loki finishes off a glass of alcohol and smashes it on the ground. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Loki is transformed back into his TVA uniform, and during all the festivities, an older man gives them the stink eye and leaves. Sylvie chides Loki for not being inconspicuous, and Loki interrupts, having an answer for a question she posed to him earlier. Love is a dagger. It's a weapon to be wielded far away or up close. You can see yourself in it. It's beautiful. Until it makes you bleed. But ultimately, when you reach for it... It isn't real. The old man returns with some guards, and naturally a fight breaks out. Even inebriated, Loki proves to be very capable at fighting. However, he is ejected from the train by being thrown out a window, and of course Sylvie has to follow him, since he still has the tempad. During the fall, Loki inadvertently has broken it, which just infuriates Sylvie to the point of screaming. Loki decides to give her a moment to calm down, and then suggests they head to the main city where the Ark is and just steal the whole ship. Since this is an apocalypse scenario, the ship isn't supposed to make it off the planet, but if it does, more TVA will show up and they can just steal their devices. They walk the tracks until they arrive at the city, but just before they enter, Sylvie reveals how her enchantment powers actually work. Much like the staff with the mind stone in it, however, there is a downside. That if the mind is powerful enough, she has to dive deep into their subconscious to manipulate deep-seated memories, kind of like the film Inception. She also reveals that all of the agents in the TVA are variants. This is a massive bombshell, as the repercussions of this means that the TVA are either brainwashing its agents to do the timekeeper's bidding, or instead of being erased, they're given the choice to work for the TVA after having their minds wiped. It's most curious that Mobius hasn't had Loki's mind erased, 
presumably because he needs Loki to think like himself in order to catch a variant of himself. But maybe it's because he wants to test if he can even trust him before offering him more permanent stay. Then again, as Mobius has stated, time moves differently in the TVA. And it could be that many of them have been there so long that they've forgotten anything about their past lives. This is more likely, given Mobius' affinity towards jet skis. He might have been someone from the 1990s who frequently enjoyed his days on the water, and then survived something he shouldn't have, and thus became a variant himself. We might even see this event play out in one of the apocalypses where the fleeing Loki skips through in a future episode giving us the origin of Mobius as he possibly runs into himself there. Tom Hiddleston recently gave an interview bringing up episodes 4 and 5, exclaiming that he really enjoys working with Owen Wilson, so it stands to reason that these next episodes will feature the pair together in numerous scenes. Once Loki and Sylvie enter the city, they agree to trust each other and begin their mission. The populace is in chaos, the people are rioting, the Kree sentries are trying to quell the mob, and flaming meteorites are smashing into the buildings and streets, destroying everything. Loki and Sylvie make a mad dash to the Ark, taking out anyone in their path. At one point, they look up to see the planet literally crack in half. As a team, they work remarkably well with each other, but are constantly held up by building collapsing here, or a group of soldiers blocking off a street there. Finally they make it to the street with a direct line to the Ark. The only thing standing in their way is a mob of people and Kree sentries battling it out. They push through, racing to get to it in time, but just then several meteorites crash through the ship and destroy it in a brilliant blaze of uproarious fire. Several people around them sink to their knees as all hope is lost, and Sylvie just turns away, strolling back into the crowd, leaving Loki behind staring at the crashing planet. A solemn song begins to play as the credits roll. All in all, this episode was interesting and we learned a bit more about the characters, but it felt more like a filler than really moving the story along. I gotta say, I missed Mobius during most of this. The whole show feels a bit empty without his presence. However, given that there are still three episodes left, I highly doubt that this is where Loki and Sylvie perish. Most likely, in the nick of time, Mobius along with B-15 and Renslayer will saunter out of a portal, snatch them up, and bring them back to the TVA. Where, no doubt, Loki will try to convince Mobius that he was just trying to capture her the whole time and was manipulating her into telling him her grand scheme. What has our curiosity is why the planet was crashing into the moon in the first place. 2077 is 50-ish years into the future of the MCU, so will we ever see the preceding event come to fruition? Will that be part of the Annihilation Wave storyline? Now, a uh, side note, we've been referring to these soldiers as Kree sentries, given that this is a Kree planet, but most of the populace look pretty human. It could also be that the soldiers are actually part of the new Nova Corps, and this could lead into an origin story of Nova. Kevin Feige has stated that while they're bringing storylines from the comics into the MCU and bringing them to life on the big screen, they also want to tell their own unique versions of those stories, as the MCU is now officially being designated as its own universe among the multiverse. We have rewatched this episode a few times now, and unfortunately we aren't as fluent with the storylines concerning Annihilation or the Kree Skrull Wars. So if you spotted any, please let us know in the comments. I want to thank you all for sitting through this breakdown and review. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and make sure you subscribe to us as we will continue uploading videos every Wednesday. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, or join our Discord server, the link provided below in the description. And if you're feeling generous, check out our Patreon, link also provided below. 
Thank you again for watching. I've been your host, Jackie Kay. And remember, even when the world looks like it's coming to an end, there's always hope. Don't be afraid to lean on your friends in turbulent times. We all have to pitch in to have each other's backs. Take care.